Good evening and welcome to Chicago Tonight. I'm Phil Ponce. On this Thursday, March 10th, the Democratic candidates for Cook County State's Attorney are here to tackle the issues before a live studio audience. That is next on Chicago Tonight. The high-profile race for Cook County State's Attorney comes as faith in the criminal justice system has been shaken, not only in Chicago, but in cities across the nation. Tonight, we'll hear from the Democratic candidates in their final appearance together before next Tuesday's primary. And we are also joined tonight by members of the League of Women Voters of Cook County and their guests. The audience is here to observe, not participate. The League is a co-sponsor of tonight's forum, along with the City Club of Chicago. And joining us in the order they appear on the ballot, are Kim Fox. She is a former assistant state's attorney who also once served as chief of staff to County Board President Tony Preckwinkle. Incumbent Anita Alvarez, who was first elected state's attorney in 2008. Prior to that, she was a prosecutor in that office for more than 20 years. And Donna Moore, she is a former federal and county prosecutor. She also served as chief legal counsel to the Illinois Gaming Board. Moore is currently a managing partner at the law firm Fox Rothschild. Whoever wins the primary will face Republican Christopher E.K. Foncook in the November general election. And if you have friends outside the Chicago area who might be interested in this program or who don't have a TV, we have a live stream right now on our website. Uh, Kim Fox, Anita Alvarez, Donna Moore, again, thank you for being here. We appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, Anita Alvarez, uh, Obviously, the Laquan McDonald case has been a key point and uh, a key issue in this campaign. Uh, you said at the time that you, uh, that you made the charge against, uh, filed charges against Officer Van Dyke, that you had been waiting for the feds before charging him, and the feds still have not finished their investigation. Is it safe to say you would still be ra waiting right now if the police video had not been released? No. Uh, when I started the investigation, I reached out to the FBI, and I reached out to the United States Attorney, and we met in December of 2014 and agreed to do a joint investigation and and I stand by that decision because doing it with the FBI and the United States Attorney uh, really brought some great resources the FBI is a, is, is a great investigative agency as you we said know. you were operating parallel investigations. absolutely he was I was always looking at what, what charges on state side that I could bring and he's looking at uh, potential civil rights he's cases. Zach Farden. Zach Farden, the United States Attorney. So, but you were waiting on them. They haven't done anything no, we yet. Doing, Would you still be waiting now? Absolutely not. We did a joint investigation. We do many joint investigations together and, and normally when you do a joint investigation you wrap it up together uh, and there's many times I stood there with the United States Attorney announcing charges on the, on the state side and he announcing his federal charges. So I was on, I anticipated that this case would be wrapped up in the middle of December of last year and when I w was informed that the video was going to be released I knew that what I had to do for public safety reasons uh, to make sure that we didn't see any violence in the city because you know when I saw that video for the first time I'm a mother I'm a mother of four children I'm, I have a 17 year old son I was shocked just as anyone else and so doing the in a meticulous thorough investigation is, is what we were trying to, what we did and and the whole goal was really to seek justice for Laquan. Kim Fox, do you believe that uh, she would still be sitting on this case had that video not been ordered released? Uh, certainly what she said at the time was that she was waiting on the feds to finish their investigation. And to be clear, only the Cook County State's Attorney could have brought murder charges. What she said at the time where she announced the, the charges was that she had been waiting. She knew for weeks that she was going to charge Officer Van Dyke, but she held off on those charges because she was waiting for the feds to finish their investigation, which was completely unrelated to the murder charges. So going off of what she said and following her logic that she was waiting for them to complete, they haven't completed, that those charges wouldn't be filed. And lastly, she said that she filed those charges between the time when it was going to be announced that that video was coming out um, and the actual coming out of the video, those four days, she was able to get those charges filed. And it was only because that video was going to be released. So the interest of public safety had nothing to do with why that video was released. It was the public was going to see what Anita Alvarez knew was that this young man was struck down. A quick response blood. from Anita Alvarez, and then we'll get to Donna Moore. Well, you know, Ms. Fox has never 
uh, investigated a murder case. She's never charged a murder case. She's never tried a murder case. I'm the only candidate here that has the experience of doing not doing that and doing hundreds of cases. And I am the only candidate here who has investigated police officers. And investigating a police officer shooting is a complex matter. It's not the same as one civilian or one gang member shooting another. There is a lot involved uh, in investigating police officer cases. And, and Phil, I was here just days after uh, I announced the charges uh, on officers. Officer Van Dyke and explained uh, and explained again what I did. I stand by my decision. Uh, neither one of my opponents have the experience or the or, or the ability uh, to try a case like this or to investigate a case like this and understand the complexity. Donna Moore, do you yes. believe Anita Alvarez that uh, that the charges would have been filed uh, even though even without a court order? No. Listen. Nobody in this county believes that charges would have been filed if the videotape hadn't been released. Officer Van Dyke would still be on the street because in every high profile case, this office has never charged a police officer and certainly not timely. This is a case where the whole world saw this videotape and there was only one person that didn't see a crime and that was Ms. Alvarez and it took her, and I've asked this question before, I'd like to know, what was done on day one? What was done on day five? What was done on day 50? And what evidence did the office have on day 400 to charge that case that they didn't have on day 30? And you know, I came out of the U.S. Attorney's Office and I will tell you that she did not have to wait to charge a murder, a state murder, to wait on the, on the feds to do a civil rights violation. That is just a cover up. And I think the problem is, is that people have lost faith in this office to do the right thing. And people believe that this crime was covered up, but for that video being released. And Anita Alvarez, there is widespread skepticism that you needed 400 days to charge Officer Van Dyke and that there was tone deafness in thinking that it didn't need to be addressed almost immediately. Are you willing to acknowledge some tone deafness on this? It was addressed immediately. When I, that video was turned over to us in November and I, on the, on the 4th of November, on the 18th of November, I'm talking to the United States Attorney. On the 19th of November, I'm turning over that video to the FBI. On the 8th of December, I'm sitting down with both the head of the FBI and the United States Attorney where we uh, agreed to do an, a joint investigation. Everything was but done. They didn't agree everything to, to investigate everything the murder. was done properly in this investigation. And I stand by the fact here's the thing. You know, what is justice, Phil? Is justice making an arrest as my two opponents claim they're going to make an arrest and make a charge on a uh, charging an officer with first degree murder in 24 hours? Or, no. Is that Ju what you wanted, Kim Fox, to charge in 24 hours? I've never said that it should be charged in 24 hours. What I've always said is that when the evidence became clear that you had enough to bring charges, bring charges. Anita Alvarez said in her own words that she knew weeks earlier the only reason she filed the charges when she did was because that video was going to be released. And I take umbrage to the, to the, the statement that it was because of fear of public safety. Her job is to seek justice on behalf of victims. The public safety argument means that she didn't do it because Laquan McDonald was shot down in the street 16 times. She did it because she thought that there was going to be a political fallout. That was her words. So she absolutely not. Said that there well, was going to be a political get fallout. Else straight. Let's all get something else straight. You know, a police shooting, while it's difficult, isn't more difficult than any other case. First Absolutely of all, I've tried, I've tried 20 juries. I've investigated plenty of uh, murders when I was on felony review, Anita. You were but in the office is, for four wait, years. I was in the office for five and a half. Check your records. Uh, but, oh, that's right, you don't keep records. But this is, this, this is the deal. The deal is, is that a police shooting is about whether there's justified use of force. It's the same analysis that you go through when you're presented with self-defense. It is the not law the same hasn't analysis. Changed okay, real quickly, on, on there, there is uh, Ms. Alvarez, on why law. you say it's not the same. Because there's complex case law from the United States uh, Supreme Court that outlines how you're supposed to look at these cases. There's case laws called Garrity, which is officers have to give compelled statements. As a prosecutor, you can't know what those statements are. Or if you do and you indict, your indictment could get thrown out. Neither one of these two women know any of that. Let's move no on. one has oh, ever. I know the case law. The question is, after 29 years, why don't you? Kim, I, Kim Fox, uh, there's still confusion about your trial experience. You first said you'd <laughs> handled hundreds of trials, but later you told the Tribune you've handled about a hundred. 
And that's a number that's hard to verify because nearly all of them were juvenile court records, which are not public. Clarify, how many trials have you handled? Certainly, Phil, I was an assistant state's attorney for 12 years, seven of which on the front lines trying cases every day. In five years as a supervisor under this state. you say handling cases uh, every day. Handling uh, cases, so child abuse cases. Yes, I know, but how many cases went to trial where there's opening statements, where there's presentation of evidence, where there's concluding statements, where there's uh, where you handle any questions that come out of jury deliberations and so Phil, forth? Phil, I've done many cases in the state's attorney's office. I've, I've Some that have gone to trial, many have gone to trial, some that have been pled out, because uh, I was a frontline prosecutor for seven years and a supervisor for five under this state's attorney. Let me ask you reported that you handled one felony trial while you worked w with a more experienced prosecutor. There's no record of you trying a murder case, and you've tried only one juvenile case involving a felony. Yeah. Is that accurate? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. The records that the Sun-Times used came when Anita Alvarez used her government office for political purposes. The records that were given were held by Anita Alvarez, and she released them. First, she so said there was Anita first, Alvarez, pursuant uh, to a FOIA. First, she said I, there was uh, one. Then she FOIA. said there were others. The problem with that, Phil, was that we're going down a rabbit hole because Anita Alvarez used her office, pursuant to a FOIA, to provide information for uh, political purposes that was inaccurate. And Did so, you, it's a uh, distraction. FOIA the records uh, inaccurate, Anita Alvarez? No, the records are not inaccurate. And what are, the, what are your records? Uh, what do you she claim your records show? She tried four cases. She tried four cases. She, her, her campaign literature says she has thousands, thousands. Then she backs down and then she says, okay, it's not thousands, it's hundreds. Then we're at the Tribune editorial. Now she's finally got, she's, She's got Phil. her feet to the fire, and she has to finally say, oh, well, it's four. Phil. She's Again, a liar. Phil. You know, if you, when you apply for a job and if you, if you lie on that job application, you don't get the job. She is lying to Phil. the voters of Cook County. She's lying about her experience. Why would you lie Phil. about your First experience? Kim She's Fox. lying about First of all, uh, the lie is about why it took 400 days to charge Laquan McDonald, to be clear. No, we're talking Second about, of all, we're talking about your we'll experience. Go to, uh, when Anita Alvarez uses words like liar, when she said she delivered a, a FOIA request that said there was one, now she's saying there's four. She is the keeper of records which are, have a history of bad data that she doesn't keep. And she knows that. And when she did it, she knew what she was doing. The issue here, So Phil, for the record, to the best of your knowledge, how Phil, many trials have you actually Phil, conducted? I, the number is not the issue here. The issue here is experience and judgment. And what got us here in this situation now, where the trust, is the where the trust of the criminal the justice issue. system is destroyed, is because of the judgment of this state's attorney and how she's handled this case and many other cases. So it's not about trials. But for it's the about record, are you, are you sticking to about 100 cases or so? That is correct, Phil. All right. Uh, Donna Moore, you haven't done a jury trial or set foot in a criminal courtroom for 25 years, according to our research. Shouldn't that bother voters? I don't think so. I've spent my whole career in a courtroom. I started as an assistant state's attorney. I went on to be an assistant United States attorney. I was general counsel for a state agency where I tried cases that got brought against us. And for the past 20 plus years, I've been a civil litigator and I'm in court all the time. And the fact is that it's that broad base of experience that gives me the ability to go into this office on day one and be able to I could first chair a case tomorrow if I wanted to. But it is about management. I uh, sit on the management committee of my law firm, which is 750 lawyers nationwide. And, and that's what's important. And as we were just talking about, this office is about truth. It's about facts. And the fact is that I don't take hundreds of thousands of dollars from politicians. Back or to from the issue of your, of your courtroom yeah, experience. Fine. With respect, the issues that are front and center in the public's mind are not candidly civil issues, they are criminal issues, matters of life and death. I agree. Are you not at a deficit in that regard no. for the past 25 years? No. A trying a case is trying a case. The subject matter is the subject matter. Ms. Fox has tried one jury in her career, and she hasn't practiced law in the last three years. I've practiced law for 30 years straight, and I'm in court every day arguing motions. I've tried cases. You don't forget what you learn. You, you build on it, and, and by doing different things, it gives you a perspective in the office that you don't have when you've been there for 29 Donna, years. Donna, you've been representing casinos for 25 years. You haven't done criminal law in 25 well, years. Not only that, I'm still trying to figure no. out why you're in this race. You're a Republican. Well, no. You, well, you have me, donated listen, to listen, Ronner. You I, have don I've made, donated I've to donated all right-wing right conservative you are so congressmen. Wrong. Anita, you're Con a wait. Republican, no. Donna. Look, let's no. be truthful no. to the let's voters. No, let's be truthful let's, to the voters. Let's, let's, let's clarify. Let's, our, let's be what is your political affiliation? You know, 
I t donated to Tony Preplinkle as well, and she raised my taxes. So the fact of the matter is, is I've donated How to much many, money have many. You donated I've to, donated to, to Republicans. Excuse me. To Republicans. Don I, I donated twenty five hundred dollars, and then I donated. Uh, many, many thousands of dollars to Democratic candidates throughout the year. But the my, more important my, my, question, my, Phil, my question is, is what is your yeah. what is your political I'm affiliation been over I, the years? I worked for uh, George McGovern when I was in high school, and I started out being a Democrat back then. And I've always been a Democrat. And you know, this is the problem. When you have no record to run on, you have to find something to damage other people. And Ms. Alvarez has no record. And let's look at, because the more important question is not who I wrote a $2,500 check to, but who they're getting money from. Ms. Alvarez gets thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars from personal injury lawyers who are getting millions and millions of dollars in cases they settle with her office. That's She's running her true. campaign. Uh, Donna Donna She's running Alvarez. her campaign out of a PI lawyer's <laughs> office. So you want to talk about conflict of interest? You want to talk about doing your job, Ms. somebody ought to be investigating Ms. Ms. Moore Ms. makes Alvarez up things right as now. we go along. No, that's what she's not, not true, telling Anita. you is that she's made all her money representing casinos, the interest of casinos. Is that who the voters of Cook County want to be the Cook, County State, Cook County State's attorney? I Someone mean, who is you representing have a cover casinos, up. who not, no, no, only, no, that, go ahead and not only that, who was, who was highly criticized by an appellate court for her handling of, of representation of a, a casino in which the casino went bankrupt and she wrote herself a two hundred thousand dollar bonus. Let's be honest with the voters of Cook I County. I, I never have, saw that. I wish a, I had an it. unbiased view of my record shows all the great things that I have done and all the things that I have accomplished since two thousand and eight. But what's unfortunate, really? Phil? Why don't you what's ask what's Mrs. Coachman or Mrs. What's Pinex, Phil? Or Emmett Farmer's this, father? Are those things that you're proud of, Anita? It, that, you, you know, certainly uh, haven't let's done move a on. Good job. Uh, Kim Fox. Uh, you've been accused of lack of decency and poor judgment to use the Laquan McDonald shooting video in a campaign ad. How do you respond to that? What I would say is, as we started this conversation, is that the trust in our criminal justice system has been broken under this state's attorney. Reminding the voters of what the issues are in this race, most highlighted by the Laquan McDonald video, is why we use that video. And so I do not believe that it was a lack of decency. Again, this was a public uh, document that Anita Alvarez fought for its release, and only after its release did she file charges in that case. It goes to the lack of judgment that this state's attorney has. Well, and well, the Ms. issues Fox doesn't understand because of her lack of experience and the fact that she's never tried a murder case and the fact that there is Again, a Ms. there Alvarez is there is a case to, pending. Likes to make up stories there that is, she knows. She there knows is that a case I've tried pending. a murder case. She knows it. She knows you that she not. waited. Yes, I have, and you know it. I and you know it. Go oh. back to the records that you sometimes keep and look at it. The issue is, Lies. Phil, is that she knows that she did not charge that case in a timely oh. manner. It's one of a history of cases, whether it's so, Rakia uh, Boyd you, or the you like. You think using no. the, the video is fair game? I, I, I believe that it, it, it highlights the, 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 it highlights the of ineptitude of the state's attorney. It violates the canons of ethics of prosecutors for pretrial publicity. And that the tape judge, had been all over the, the news for weeks, the and she knows it. It's been all over the news for months. It's she's been right. on she's CNN using, and MSNBC. She's using the case for political reasons. The case is pending. The judge has issued a gag order. We're not supposed to talk about it. The canons of ethics for prosecutors tell us we're not supposed to talk about it. She's, you she know, she can about the damage case everywhere this case. She, right, let's, she talks let's, about let's, it let's, at, let's, at every opportunity. Let's move on. Speaking of videos, and this is a question to all of you, uh, the mayor plans to release videos of police shootings within 60 and 90 days of the incident. Donna Moore, do you support that? I, I don't support it outright because here's what I think we have to do with videos. First of all, the state's attorney needs to take control of cases, not the independent police review agency, because these are criminal cases until the state's attorney were to say they're not. And as such, I don't want a citizen board taking control of my evidence. I would release the video at the time when I publicly release it in a courtroom. So if that's at bond court, that's when I would release it. If it's not until trial, that's when I would release it. Kim Fox, releasing a video between uh, 60 and 90 days of an incident? 
Certainly, I don't know if there's an arbitrary number that you can put on the date when you release the video. That's what the mayor's proposed. Where it doesn't compromise the integrity of your investigation. Need well, yeah. That's the issue, is whether or not it's going to compromise the case and compromise, and again, I go back to the rules uh, that we are guided by as prosecutors, and we're not supposed to be releasing evidence uh, uh, pre-trial. And, and so it's, it, we have to be very careful about this, but I think what, we're in the digital age now that we weren't in 15, 20 years ago. And so this is something we need to talk about. About. Because the reality is, that, you know, we have our investigation and we have what, the evidence that we're trying to build. The city is in a different position. I can't control what the city does, and so I can't stop the mayor from doing that. But I think we have to be very careful. Ms. Alvarez, last December you said there were serious discrepancies in the statements that officers filed about the Laquan McDonald shooting and the actual video. When will you decide if those officers broke the law? Well, first of all, you know, any officer that lies, in my opinion, should not remain an officer. And, uh, no matter what department he's on. Uh, the federal investigation as we sit here today still continues. And so uh, I, when I announce charges on, on Van Dyke, I am no longer part of that federal investigation. However, I do know that it is still continuing. So I but think do you in have due time. You, have juris you do have jurisdiction, well, don't you, against is, those officers? This is an issue that, that um, quite frankly, in due time, I think we'll hear from uh, uh, U.S. Attorney Farden about whether or not uh, these officers, if there's but any, the any yes. charges. She has jurisdiction to charge these officers if she she chose to do so. And they, there are other cases of perjury. Not, when, does, when the state's attorney says that when an officer, that I cannot talk when an about, officer lies the, and perjures himself, the state's attorney says that he should no longer have that job. There have been cases that have been well documented where recommendations right. for Neither perjury one of where these, recommendations for Neither perjury one of these were made. Let, let evidence evidence where recommendations case. of perjury were made by her own assistant state's attorneys up to Anita Alvarez for recommendations of charges and she chose not to do it. And the excuse that she gave when confronted, Phil, was that it's difficult to get convictions in those cases. Not that the person didn't perjure, not that it wasn't a breach of the law, but because it was too hard that the Anita Alvarez chose not to do her job. It's simply, it's simply not true. And neither one of these two have any knowledge of the facts of the Van Dyke case. They have no knowledge of what I know in this, in this Can investigation. Can you charge them independently of the U.S. Attorney's Office. I, I can't talk about that. The case is still. No, I'm just pendulous. asking you if you have the jurisdiction if, to charge them. If I have jurisdiction, yes, I, I can, but I can't tell you. Well, I can't not, tell. You, I, I'm bound by case. the rules of the federal of the federal court, and I'm bound by the rules of, of what Judge Gaunt has issued as a, as a gag order. So there's certain evidence I just can't talk about. You know, because but, but, what about but, the Glenview Police case? The Glenview Police <laughs> case. You had three officers that perjured themselves. You had a judge that state so them, on the record. And I charged them. Yeah. Eight and a half months later, you had a judge say so on the record, you had the transcript, and you had a videotape. And the only reason that case came to light was because the Glenview mayor made a, 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 wrote a letter, gave it to the press, and said, hey, I'm paying these three police officers. My taxpayers are paying these officers to sit at home because Anita Alvarez, police excuse officers. me, I don't no. want to hear that statistic because you raise statistics here that none of the rest of us can ever get out of your office from a FOIA and the BGA is suing you right now over that. But it took her eight and a half months and the Glenview mayor to, to bring light to this case and only that it was a complex investigation according to Ms. Alvarez, but uh, a day later, after the case comes to court, magically the case get, uh, case goes in the paper, magically the case gets charged. Right. Let's so, move on. Let's move on. Kim Pox, you have been fined more than $19,000 by the state's Board of Elections for violating campaign finance laws. Why should voters trust your legal expertise when you've had problems with campaign finance laws? Certainly. We are disagree with the rulings of the State Board of Elections and we're it appealing. It was unanimous. It was unanimous. And we're appealing. We disagreeing doesn't mean that they didn't find that it was unanimous. We disagree. We're appealing and we will follow the recommendations that are made by the State Board of Elections. This race, as we said from the very beginning, is about the integrity of our criminal justice system. It's about the lack of faith that the state's attorney has imposed on our county by her, her lack of effort in, in taking cases to trial. Um, and that's what this, the, issue, the issues are about here. And so we're appealing, and we will move on from there. The, the voters of Cook County need an independent state's attorney, which I have been, not a political puppet uh, for some political boss. Ms. Fox is a liar. She has been found guilty of uh, violating the finance campaign laws unanimously. She got one of the biggest fines ever in the history of Cook County. How can the voters 
uh, trust her. How, in the same we're way talking about in the same truthfulness, way that, truthfulness in the same and way, integrity. Anita, that you truthfulness change, you and hold, integrity, which you don't have, Kim, in the because same you're way, a proven liar in and, the, and you're guilty Anita, of the, violating laws. In the we have same to uphold way the laws. That you we have to uphold information the from laws, your, Kim. We do. Not like, break them. Like FOIA, like you. Anita, when you release I, information <laughs> for political reasons, and again, you get stats, you don't have stats, because your office uses it for political reasons. Secondarily, Phil, the issues here related to this race, Anita Alvarez, Donna Moore, and I have had an opportunity to talk about these issues before the Tribune, the Sun-Times, and the Daily Herald. Each of those organizations, each of those media outlets endorsed me with all of these issues having been vetted. Anita Alvarez but has the used tribune, this. The Tribune, the, Anita the Alvarez tribune has questions used this. whether you're running for public defender. You, and, and I don't because, call that a glowing endorsement. That's uh, far from being a glowing Anita endorsement. Anita Alvarez. And there's serious two questions term, about Anita Alvarez what is a two-term in, incumbent has caused our criminal justice system to be the laughing stock of the nation. That is and what we'll have to leave it. Kim Fox, Anita Alvarez, Donna Moore, thank you all for being here. I wish we had more time. And again, our thanks to the audience and to the League of Women Voters of Cook County. The League is a co-sponsor of tonight's forum, along with the City Club of Chicago. And back to wrap things up right after this. Tonight's forum on Chicago Tonight was made possible in part by the League of Women Voters of Cook County. Chicago Tonight is made possible in part by the City Club of Chicago. Smart people may disagree about what makes a great city. But part of what makes Chicago great is that we don't have to agree. To run a city like ours, a lot of issues come up. The City Club of Chicago is a place to debate those issues and hear from the men and women who shape the policies, lead the industries, and tell the stories that define our city. For the free and open exchange of ideas, the City Club of Chicago. And that is our show for this Thursday night. I hope you join us tomorrow night at 7 for the Week in Review. Now for all of us here at Chicago Tonight, I'm Phil Ponce, and I thank you for watching. Good night. Well Closed captioning for this program is brought to you by Robert A. Clifford and Clifford Law Offices. Bob Clifford is on the board of overseers of the Rand Institute for Civil Justice, a think tank in California.